So, I think uh, we're again ready to go. I would like to welcome you all. Welcome Micro Hunter here, all over here. And welcome again uh, to another Saturday microscopy live stream. For those of you who don't know me, um, yeah, I, as you as I just said, I'm Oliver, and uh, I am the not only the host of uh, this uh, video here and this channel here, but also I've got another uh, YouTube uh, channel where I talk about microscopes. Um, yeah, and uh, today I would like uh, to talk about so-called uh, stereo microscopes. It's I think a um, type of microscope that is sometimes a little bit neglected. Um, and uh, for this reason, I'd like to dedicate uh, this video today uh, to this, uh, yeah, to this type of microscopes. And what I will do is, is I will talk maybe about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depends um, a little bit uh, about uh, some theory, um, some, some background. I'd like to explain to you the system that I've got here. And then, of course, we're going to look at a few things also under the stereo microscope. As a matter of fact, you can already see one of them. The things here, this here is now a, yeah. Uh, yeah, a small computer, Arduino computer. So those stereo microscopes are also used for electronics, but I also have a few biological samples as well um, to look at. Um, and uh, yes, so you are of course uh, invited and welcome uh, to post uh, questions into the chat. I see that some people have already started to do that. Um, yeah, we've got people every week from all over the world. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, that's a very nice thing that uh, yeah, so many different people from all over the world are united by the same common interests. Um, there, it's also like this that I, I decided to make uh, this uh, specific video on stereo microscopes because I did receive again emails uh, from parents who wanted to buy a microscope for their children and uh, specifically for young children to do microscopy together. And uh, there, quite, there was a question, okay, which type of microscope should I buy if I want to do microscopy with, uh, with my small children? And I recommended, well, may, go for stereo microscopes because they have a whole range of, of different advantages. Okay, yeah, I see that already there are many people signing in here saying hello from Tennessee, from India, from California, Bulgaria, Netherlands, New York, and Scotland. <laughs> I love this. Okay, yeah, and uh, yeah, another comment, sir. I recently found your channel and I really uh, love it. I was looking forward for your live lecture, but apparently I missed it last time. If you missed uh, my videos uh, live, then you can watch all of them. Um, yeah, in an un, yeah, in full length um, um, afterwards, uh, they are available uh, in the YouTube channel. Okay, so that means you just have to go back in um, and and look for them, um, and uh, then you can find them uh, yeah, interspersed with my other videos that I make. And uh, of course, uh, I already mentioned this, but I just want to clarify this: uh, this uh, specific channel that you're looking at right now is uh, called Micro Hunter Microscopy, and this is the more yeah, advice uh, related uh, channel where I talk about microscopes and, and, uh, and uh, specimen, prep specimen preparation and so on. But I do also have a main channel simply called Microbe Hunter where I upload uh, yeah, simply observation videos every week. Okay, can we see cells with a stereo microscope? Short answer is yes, maybe not quite as well as with a compound microscope, but because you're asking, because you're asking, I'm just going to show it to you. Okay, so I've got a permanent slide here, but I will also show you some water samples. Okay, this here is the cross section of a pumpkin. It's a commercial slide. I have to focus here and uh, because I've got a zoom microscope. Okay, look, I can zoom in. And uh, it goes out of focus every time, so I have to refocus again. And you, all those structures that you see over here, look, I've got an arrow as well. Yeah, that's here a cell. This is a cell. Um, as a matter of fact, those lines that you see here are the cell walls. So um, short answer, yes, you can see cells. Bacteria um, are also cells, but they're too small to be seen. But before I actually want to look at those uh, samples here, um, I would like to simply reach down a little bit to show you some microscopes uh, so that uh, those of you who are new to this topic um, can orient uh, yourself a little bit better. Um, so what I've got here is uh, yeah, um, yeah, a small introductory microscope and uh, this is um, usually how people um, when they think of microscopes uh, what they have in their mind um, and you have over here objectives um, that you can rotate and this is not a stereo microscope okay this is what we call a compound microscope and uh, you look through the eyepiece um, and uh, you put a slide so this slide yeah you, you put it on, yeah on here 
yeah, on the, yeah, the, the stage, stage clips, the light comes from the bottom and then you're able to look at it. Okay, so this is basically, um, yeah, I would say the, the most well-known type of, of light microscope. Yeah? Um, this one here is, is pretty small, so I can hold it, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they can be quite huge. And the notice that over here there is one eyepiece uh, to look through, um, but many compound microscopes have two eyepieces to look through because it's simply more convenient to look through them. Um, you don't have to close one eye all the time or hold it closed. Um, but even if there are two eyepieces, yeah, it is not a stereo microscope because both eyes will receive the same picture and therefore you will still, still see a flat image because stereo microscopes, the topic that I want to talk about today, they give you a three-dimensional impression, a stereoscopic impression. Okay, So again, um, those compound microscopes have either one eyepiece or two, uh, but even if they have two eyepieces, um, you will not see a stereoscopic, a three-dimensional image. Okay, so this is basically simply for, for reference purposes so that people who are new to this uh, yeah, topic are able to, to kind of find the orientation. I'm going to show you now um, a stereo microscope and, and I'm always uh, also, also looking um, at, the, at, the, um, at the comments here. Yeah, yeah there is a specific question about achromatic uh, fluoride apochromatic objectives. I'm really confused. I think this might be a... a, yeah, a large topic for another video. Um, if I have time, maybe I'm going to talk about this, but uh, this uh, is an important, the different types of objectives are really uh, important, but uh, not quite related to stereo microscopes. So what I have here now is a stereo microscope, just like the one that I have on my table, okay? which you cannot see, of, of course, but this here is a stereo microscope. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, there are two eyepieces. Um, and look look at the place where you put the object, okay, down here. Yeah? Um, so there's a pretty large distance between the, the object. Uh, yeah, so you can take, I don't know, your, your own hand if you want to look at it, your own fingers, for example. And you can place it directly here on the stage. Yeah, there is a light coming from the top. But if you want, you can also have a light coming from the bottom. But I think the one the light coming from the top is, is, is really important. Yeah? Uh, focusing happens here. By turning this, and then the whole thing goes up and down, and this kind of focuses yeah, the, the specimen. Yeah? Now, the important thing is the following. There's a really a very big important difference, and that is, is that there are, for each eye, there is a separate light path. How, how, how am I going to point this? It's kind of heavy a little bit. Yeah? So if you look through this eye here, yeah, then there is a light path. There's a, there are prisms in here, and then there is an objective here for this one eye, and there is a separate objective for the other eye, okay? So this means there are actually two objectives down here, yeah, two, two lenses, yeah, and two, like binoculars and two separate light paths. This basically means that each eye will receive a different image, one a little bit more from the left, one a little bit um, uh, uh, from the right, and then essentially um, you get a stereoscopic view. Okay, so the concept is entirely different and the advantage of stereo microscopes is, is that uh, you essentially do not have to look at transparent objects. Okay, so, um, so I will be, this is the focus of today's, uh, today's uh, video. Um, I will um, explain a little bit the microscope that I'm actually using uh, to make uh, this video today and I'm just going to put this again back. Just a second, I'll be back in five seconds. I have to put it down on the floor. Okay, here I am again. So, yeah, there are a few more qu uh, quotes here. Yes, about achromatic fluoride, uh, apochromatic objectives. Uh, I think I might answer this either towards the end or in a separate video. Yeah, from, from Spain, <laughs> hello as, as well. From Serbia, hello. And can you get dark field effect on the stereo microscope? Um, a dark field is when you have a bright specimen on a dark background and you can of course get an effect like this uh, if you have a dark background and I can show this to you as well um, yeah. and uh, look um, you can see here on the side yeah yeah what uh, yeah, I'm doing here is I can lift this out and it, it does have a certain feature look ah, okay look the <laughs> yeah, it, it's black here and of course if you have now a bright object yeah um, uh, somehow um, on a dark background, I don't know which bright object I'm going to use, yeah? but you see it won't make a lot of a difference because uh, it's opaque. Yeah? Um, so this means that 
if you consider this dark field that you have a bright object um, on a dark background then you can get a dark field effect uh, but actually strictly speaking it is not really dark field because dark field what you have is, is that even transparent objects um, are bright on a dark background and you can do that with compound microscopes but you do not use transparent objects um, on a stereo microscope Okay, so for this reason, the question about dark field is, is, um, is, is it doesn't really quite apply uh, to the sense. However, <laughs> if you do have a bright specimen uh, on a dark background, you might get uh, you know, something that looks similar. Okay, um, what is the preferable magnification of a stereo microscope? It's probably depend on the specimen. Well, the magnification from stereo microscopes go up to a maximum of around 40 times. I consider it up to 40 times to be useful. No, you can actually go higher I will, yeah, if you have so-called Barlow lenses. Okay, this, with this one over here, I'm going to able to go up to all, all the way up to 90 um, magnification, but I think it's not useful anymore. Yeah? So uh, this is simply something that I also would like to, to, to clarify. So uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to um, yeah, I quickly explain the, what stereo microscopes are. Now I'm going to quickly show you the system that I am using here so that you also um, know a little bit more about this. If you want to see the whole picture of this, this is exactly the same microscope that is on the thumbnail. A picture of this video. Um, there is uh, this, uh, yeah, this picture that I made uh, to announce the, the, this video here and there's a, is a photograph and that is exactly this, um, um, this microscope over here and it is a, yeah, I'm just going to show it to you uh, because <coughs> many people wonder which brand is it but I'm going to tell you uh, it doesn't really matter because the same microscope is sold under different brand names. Okay, look, you might ha you have to look here now in the corner a little bit here. Okay, here in the corner. Yeah, yeah so this up. Yeah, so this is basically the stage. Okay. Yeah, and here there is a ring light. I have to buy this separately. Um, yeah, and you, I can adjust the brightness by turning it here. There is a switch on the back side. Okay, you, see, you get that. Okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there's of course a, a power supply cable. So when we go further up, we can see, of course, uh, the two eyepieces. Yeah, I can you know, adjust the eye distance this way here. Okay. By the way, um, I actually did make a review video, an unpacking video of when I bought this microscope a few years ago. Um, you might actually also find it in this uh, channel. Okay. It's unpacking a stereo microscope and just I give you a very detailed. Yeah. And over here on the side is an interesting feature that I have here. There is a knob that you can turn. Okay. On the other side as well, you see. And look, when I, when I turn this knob, I'm able to zoom. I have a continuous zoom, and this lever over here um, redirects the light of the left eye piece of the left eye to the camera. So if I push it in, you see that it basically. And now I'm able to look through, and I see uh, both, uh, yeah, uh, in both eyes. But if I pull it out, then one eye piece, one eye becomes dark. The left one becomes dark and the light is redirected out the photo tube and now the big surprise for you big big surprise because you're kind of expecting a really advanced and cool camera nope i connected my mobile phone <laughs> i'll explain why so what i'm doing right now is uh, the mobile phone is uh, connected over usb to my computer um, and I'm using now the mobile phone like a webcam. There are those uh, apps that you can install. So you have to install the app on the mobile phone and also the program on the computer and then you can use a mobile phone like a webcam. Now you might wonder a little bit why I'm doing that. Okay, why, why mobile phone? Aren't it, you know, I've got so many cameras. The reason is very simple. You will be surprised. The image quality is better. Yeah, okay, so I just want to show this to you. Um, um, so, yeah, these are yeah, those uh, typical microscope cameras that you that you know, okay. And um, yeah, of course, I can also. It's also connected over USB. Of course, I can also connect it. But um, the image quality, for whatever reason, isn't quite as high. Um, but it's very good uh, if you use it for compound microscope. But somehow it's a little bit blurry. And I also figured out why it's a little bit blurry because I, I get a lot of uh, extra magnification here. So it, the image is blown up is much bigger. And if it's bigger, it also appears to be more blurry. Yeah. And for this reason, I decided to use my mobile phone because with the mobile phone, I'm able to see the full width of the eye um, piece. Look, I'm, I'm going to zoom now using the mobile phone. You see? Yeah, that's how it looks like. 
Yeah, I'm able to see the whole field of view and not just a small section in the center, yeah? um, like with the camera. And so what I'm have to do is have to simply yeah, zoom in a little bit and then able yeah, to, to get this again, okay? So this is a little bit the, the explanation of, of why I'm using a mobile phone. I'm, I'm getting a slightly larger field of, or a significantly larger field of view and therefore also a little bit more image clarity. I'm going to read again um, uh, over here some of the how do photos taken from a stereo microscope compare with top illumination using a compound microscope? Yes, that's an interesting one. Um, so first of all, I have uh, already made videos and um, also a live stream once um, about with a compound microscope and top illumination. Just a second, I'm going to show you. So what you do is, is you take a compound microscope, you use the lowest magnification, which is uh, four times. Um, you put uh, whatever you want on here. Well, you know what? <laughs> It's an ammonite, uh, yeah, a pet petrified ammonite, a, a fossil. You put it on here, right? <laughs> you have to lower it, of course, a little bit, and then you take a, a flashlight, okay, and you shine it on top. Yeah? Uh, and when you do that, you get uh, um, an image that looks, uh, yeah, not stereoscopic, okay? You do not get a 3D view, okay, obviously not. Um, but um, you do get, um, yeah, um, pretty much, uh, it looks pretty much the same otherwise. And the question is now, how is the image quality? And I have to tell you, the image quality is very good. Okay. So um, I highly recommend that if you have a compound microscope before rushing out and buying a stereo microscope, um, try that first. Okay, put, put, put an object directly on the stage and using low power. Um, the disadvantage is, is that this gives you then at the lowest magnification 40 times and this is already a lot. Okay, those, uh, those, uh, my microscope over here is, has the lowest magnification um, of about seven times. It goes from seven times um, to 40 times uh, when I zoom. Yeah. Um, and um, you're gonna say, why only seven times? Yeah, but it looks very good because you get a stereoscopic view. <clears throat> so you see what I'm trying to make clear here is, is that those stereo microscopes, they cannot really um, be directly compared to compound microscopes um, because um, the things, the objects that you look at are simply simply different. Okay, so that's this, this ammonite, um, okay, um, again, okay. So, I love waterborne microbes. Is there a guidebook out there like, are there for birds? I find microscopy is a lot like bird watching. Yes, um, there are, of course, identification books out there um, for water microorganisms. Um, yeah, and uh, not only that, you can go online. There are some also some online guides. Usually, um, when you look at water organisms, uh, you always keep on seeing more or less the same yeah, taxons, yeah. Oh, it's a I don't know, yeah, a, a vorticella. You won't know which species it is, yeah. But you, you're able to to oh, these are nematode worms, yeah. So of course you're able to find find the categories a, a little bit when going out into nature and say oh I found a bird. You might not know exactly which bird it is, but at least you know it's a bird. Oh, I found a bear, all right. And and it's the same thing which uh, with uh, with water microorganisms. You're able to find them. You're able to find maybe the uh, their broad taxon, but you might not uh, yeah, know specifically which type of species it is, okay? Um, what is the name of this app you're using? The name of the app uh, to make this? Yes, I forgot, I forgot the name of the app is Irion, I-R-I-U-N, Irion Webcam, I-R-I-U-N. And uh, Irion Webcam, that is the app that I'm using and you need to install it on the mobile phone and you also need to install the program. It's free, I think. Yeah, I, I didn't pay anything. Uh, you also need to install the program on the computer. And then you can use it just, uh, you can use any mobile phone like a webcam, either over USB or over Wi-Fi. Yeah. So, um, are the eyepieces are the eyepieces the same as on compound microscopes? No, good question. Okay, I'm just gonna show you. Okay, no, the eyepieces are not the same. Okay, so the eyepieces of uh, stereo microscopes are wider. Okay, uh, it's, yeah, it's difficult to, to, to show here. Okay, but they are a little bit they're a little bit thicker. Okay, so they're 30 millimeters, and these are 23 millimeters. 
yeah so um so stereo microscope eyepieces are a little bit thicker and to make matters worse yeah the one from from here yeah is even thicker okay yeah so stereo microscope eyepieces are not uh, not compatible to to the others okay so um how to test peak pigment for parasites like tapeworms? Are there some special ways to prepare a sample? Um, you don't want to, I think it's not, you're not looking for tapeworms, but you're, you're looking for those cysts um, that uh, um, essentially can be found in some, um, in some uh, uh, pork meat. Yes, uh, you can do that. You have to microtome it, you have to section it, and uh, then you, um, you're able to see those cysts. I actually have some, some microscope slides on that. Yeah? On the topic book of recommendations, I have this große Buch der Mikroskopie, das Leben im Wassertropfen. Any other recommendations? In oh, this große Buch, the, the big book of microscopy is very good. Leben im Wassertropfen is, um, you know what? Um, I'll make a separate video, okay? Uh, I think, yeah, there are a few books that I can recommend, um, especially if you're interested in, um, in identifying water microorganisms, we're using a stereo microscope or not, um, uh, uh, find, the, find the website of Wilhelm Feusner. Um, he, was a, he made all of his publications and books freely available online. Feusner, he, is, he passed away a few years ago. He was one of the big protozoologists. Um, yeah, um, and he basically um, yeah, made a lot of his materials available freely online. Okay, um, so uh, Irian Web 4K is okay. Better is Droid Cam. Ah, interesting. Didn't try that. Okay, I'll try Droid Cam as well. So let's let's move on a little bit um, concerning uh, the because there are a few things that I want to explain to you. Some some interesting uh, things concerning um, concerning uh, stereo microscopes, which you might. Uh, consider a little bit annoying, but which is completely normal. So look, um, this here is a slide of a flea, which I'm going, to, yeah, so here it is a, a permanent, look, it's a permanently, look, I'll show you over here. Yeah, it's a permanently mounted slide of a flea, a commercial one. Okay, maybe I should turn this around again because it's black. So I'll turn this around again because this way you have light bouncing off from the bottom side and makes it a little bit brighter. Okay. So let's uh, zoom in a little bit here because I'm going to use the eye of the flea as a reference point to illustrate something. Okay. Okay. So here we go. It's a dog flea. By the way, I'm working on a video for my other channel uh, why are fleas five reasons why fleas are able to jump so far, which I want to release in the near future. You see, ah, it's, it's uh, difficult. Okay, so um, in case you're wondering why is everything so so yellow, reddish, and all of a sudden it changes color, this is the automatic white balance of the camera, okay, which kind of changes the colors around, okay. Um, so they basically, um, yeah, over here, uh, I want to point now to the eye. Okay, look here, this is not, where is this? Where, why does the arrow not here? Yes, here. Okay, let's uh, look, uh, the, the point tip of the arrow is now directly on the eye. Okay, and now I'm focusing, okay, I'm not zooming, I'm focusing. And look what happens um, to the position of the eye. You see, now it moves to the right. I'm turning the other direction, now it moves to the left. Okay, what in the world's going on? Why is this, uh, why is the, yeah? Actually, I, I'm just raising and lowering, I'm just raising and lowering the, the head of the microscope. So why is the image shifting left and right? And I will tell you why this is of significance. It's not a mistake, uh, but this is uh, of significance when you do image stacking. I'm gonna show you. Because what we have, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm gonna turn this microscope around. Maybe you're able to see this. Do you see this? Ah, the two objectives, okay? Yeah, um, the act, the center line is here between the objectives, okay? And one ob objective is for the left eye, one is for the right eye, they're in an angle, okay? And when you move the whole head up and down, okay? When you move the whole head up and down, when you focus, 
uh, then basically you have to yeah so these are the two objectives and when you move the head up and down when you focus um, because uh, the image is picked up only from one objective yeah then uh, basically the angle to the specimen changes um, and this causes the horizontal shift and this can be uh, if you're not careful, a problem when you uh, try to combine different images together when you do focus stacking. Um, and for this reason, you have to uh, always click the check mark when you do focus stacking to that the, the program also adjusts for, for that also aligns the images. Okay, um, but this is simply something that I, I want to tell you that um, some that's one of the effects. Okay, that you that you get is is when you when you focus is is that you have a horizontal shift um, on, of the image, and then there is a second thing that you have to be aware of when you use stereo microscopes is when you focus because when you move down, of course, then uh, the the uh, objective is closer to the specimen, and then it also makes the image a little bit larger as well. I'm just saying this that this is something sometimes an issue that can cause a little bit of an image uh, quality deterioration if you want to combine several different images uh, of different focus together into one final image. Yeah. So this is uh, simply also something that I wanted uh, some kind of a a, a um, yeah a, a unique thing that I kind of wanted to show you. Uh, yeah. Uh, concerning uh, concerning stereo microscopes that you have to be aware of. Okay, so uh, let me put the coin again in here. Okay, um, so there has is now another question. The last time, um, one last live stream, you showed us the massive eyepieces to use on the Olympus. What uh, what type are they? Uh, what type are they? Uh, honestly, these are. These are very large because I have a large field of view. They are ten times magnifying eyepieces. I can show you again if you want to. Okay, here here they are. Okay, um, yeah, these are basically proprietary eyepieces from Olympus. Okay, um, those uh, those big companies uh, they all have defined their own standards. Yeah, and uh, th these are huge. So basically, um, they're not 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 they don't have the the standard diameter. Yeah, like yeah. But my old Olympus microscope had the standard diameter eyepieces. Okay. So hello from Texas. <laughs> yes, very international. So um, we've got people from all over the place, which I really like a lot. So what I decided to do now is I want to show you just a few things under the stereo microscope. Um, yeah, um, the easiest things are always those things that are uh, completely flat. Okay, and we we'll of course always start at the um, at the lowest uh, magnification. Well, me being from Europe, of course, uh, here it is a one euro coin. Yeah. Um, yeah, you see different types of metals, of course, and um, coins are one of the easiest or the easier specimens because they're highly reflective. So this basically um, yeah, allows you to, to see the things at high contrast. Yeah? And of course, all of the scratches can be seen. Yeah? Yeah, and when you turn it around, ah, yeah, that's Mozart, the composer. Okay. Yeah, so um, w when we zoom in, let's uh, yeah, let's have a look here. By the way, if you um, if you are interested in the rare or now now rare hobby of stamp collecting, then of course stereo microscopes are also something of interest. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you see, it's uh, quite quite large yeah uh, opaque objects you would not be able to see it um yeah um qu quite uh, yeah um, as nicely otherwise yeah um there is one thing that i need to clarify a little bit um and that is the following um because you are not able to see the image stereoscopically because uh, there's only one camera here obviously and, and on your computer screen you only have one image and both of the eyes receive the same picture um but stereo microscopes when you look through them in in real in real you actually see the image jumping right at you okay uh, you you actually see depth and this is really a, a very impressive um, thing so you cannot compare it simply by yeah, by having it just larger, okay? Because you really get a feeling of depth. And that is something that I, um, yeah, that, that's uh, the, the nice thing here, okay? So um, we looked at the coin. 
um, we already looked at the flea. This here, um, I already yeah, always have to go back here, is the cross section of um, a pumpkin. There was the question, can we see individual cells? Yeah, um, of course, these cells are pretty large anyway. And the answer is, of course, yes. Okay, uh, so all of these uh, things are cells. And uh, what we see here is, is uh, also the, the cells that are able to transport the water and nutrients, That's the vascular bundle, the vascular tissue. And all of those lines here that kind of uh, yeah, border the cells are, of course, the cell walls. It's a commercially prepared microscope slide. And uh, yeah, you would actually see it pretty much in a very similar way um, under a compound microscope. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is uh, also pretty fine. Uh, another thing that I wanted to show you, which I already did show you at the beginning, um, stereo microscopes are commonly used for uh, people who are into electronics, okay, for soldering and for quality control. So, for example, if you would like to check whether yeah, certain, where is this? Yeah, these are my tweezers. Whether certain parts here are, um, are proper, properly soldered or where there's a small damage, then you use stereo microscopes, of course. Um, so, uh, yeah, folks who are doing electronics quite frequently use those. Yeah. Um, people who um, are studying insects, entomologists um, use them. So, um, I, um, as a biology teacher in school, um, we are also doing insect uh, studies uh, uh, with students and uh, we use uh, our stereo microscopes there as well. Okay, yeah, so this is... Yeah. Um, I wonder how a parabolic mirror from a telescope would look like under the microscope since it's very smooth. Yes, uh, what you're going to see is the following. Um, when you put very smooth objects under the microscope, um, you're going to see the dust. <laughs> Seriously, there is almost no object which is completely dust free. Um, and uh, as soon as you yeah, take um, any smooth surface or glass plate or anything out, um, you're going to find some dust, yeah, some fibers, yeah, and yeah, they Im immediately will, will settle down and uh, you might not be able to see them uh, with the unaided eye. But uh, yeah, in, in other words, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, visible then. Oh, electronics, I like it, show more. <laughs> yeah. Um, can you show more space? Um, I wonder what you mean with more space. You mean a wider field of view. I don't know if this is what you mean with more space. I can, I can zoom out a little bit like this here. If this is, is this what you uh, uh, meant, yeah. Um, is there a 3D printed digital camera adapter that is viable for stereo microscopes? Okay, um, that, that, that's an interesting one because I've, I've been actually thinking about this uh, myself today. I just want to show this to you, um, what I've, been trying to do um, and maybe I'm going to just bend it up again you have to now look uh, again into the corner okay uh, you got to look at, at, at this here um, you know what I'm gonna do just a second I'm going to use the stage cam I'm going to try something I'm going to try to make this bigger yeah I think that's better okay so I'm going to show you now how I've adapted my mobile phone okay the mobile phone over here there is the USB which goes into the uh, into, into the computer okay um, and then it goes into the program for doing the live stream so no no secret here this here is a relatively cheap mobile phone adapter okay I actually also made a review video on this I like this one because it's very stable and in here um, a little bit difficult I need to take this out here okay here, this is a, an eyepiece. It's a regular eyepiece, um, and I put it in here. Yeah, so um, this is actually the size of the eyepieces for for compound microscopes, and um, it will actually. And then the camera lens is aligned with the eyepiece. So it's almost like if if an if if an eye were to look through an eyepiece. Yeah, and what I have what I have over here is the following. On the side, I can loosen the screw and I can lift it up and down and tighten it to make sure that both what I look through here and what I get in the camera is both in focus at the same time. Okay, that's why I'm able to adjust the height. Now, um, about making a camera adapter, 
And what I've been thinking about doing is the following. When I say camera adapter, I mean, um, I guess you also mean a, an adapter for a DSLR camera. Where is mine? I cannot find it. Okay. Um, a single lens reflex camera. And in this case, I suggest the following. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to remove the complete part here at the top. Okay. And I would like to make a new adapter so that th without an optics, without an eyepiece, I'm able to project the image from the microscope directly on the sensor of the camera. And for this reason, the distance has to be correct. Now, I have already 3D printed um, an adapter for a compound microscope some time ago. Again, I made a video on this and I would like to try the same thing here because I do hope this way to improve the image quality. Why? Because every time when um, um, light has to go through an optical system, the contrast uh, goes down. Okay. And for this reason, it's actually nice to have a, a possibility to directly project it um, onto the sensor of a camera. Okay. So here, here we are again. Um, yeah, so uh, field of view, yeah, is it better than a camera of a microscope, this phone? Um, let's put it this way. Um, compared to, strangely enough, compared to this camera, the mobile phone works significantly better, but this is not a problem of the camera alone. Um, it's, it's simply, I would say that uh, the, 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 the optics here also magnifies too much. So it zooms in quite a bit and therefore it becomes more blurry. Okay. So um, I think there are multiple parameters, multiple factors that kind of uh, play, play a role. Okay. So um, yeah. So let me go, is it better than the camera? I have the same adapter, thank you very much. This eyepiece is important. Yes, it's a, yeah, it, it, it's a regular eyepiece. I don't know, I think it's a 15 times eyepiece. You can also use a 10 times eyepiece, yeah. Um, and, and that is important. Uh, by the way, the system that you use um, with a mobile phone camera going through an eyepiece um, is called, uh, um, um, I cannot believe this, I forgot the word. <laughs> no, it has a specific name, a focal photography, a focal photography. That's the term. If you Google for a focal photography, um, then um, basically it means that you uh, put a camera like a compact camera, not a big camera with a big lens, but a small camera or a mobile phone in front of the eyepiece. It's called a focal photography. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hi, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, about the microscope advice? Uh, yes, for DSLR or mirrorless, and I saw your video on the compound microscopes, most impressive, yeah? Can polarized work on stereo? That's a good one, yes, why not? Uh, however, for polarization work, you need to have light coming from the bottom. And what I have got here, and this was my choice, okay? There is no lamp here on the bottom, yeah? Um, Over here, the other microscope, up. Uh. Yeah, the other microscope has a very thick base. Why? Because there is a lamp in here. Okay, so polarized work does work with uh, this microscope because you have, it has, you, you, light comes from the bottom. Okay, light comes from the bottom. It goes through a polarization filter that you put on here. You put a specimen on top of it. You put a, an, another polarization filter on top of it and it should work. Okay, um, but not with the setup that I have. A second. Uh, why? Yeah, because I don't have light coming from the bottom and I deliberately did not want to have light coming from the bottom because I wanted to have a big, you know, you can see over here. Yeah, I, I wanted to have a big platform yeah, and, and a flat one. It was my personal preference, but this microscope is sold under different versions. So if you go into Amazon and if you look for a zoom stereo microscope, there are not so many of them. Uh, they're all from different brands, but essentially they're all the same because uh, the different companies simply sell them um, using their own name. Yeah. So uh, can polarized work? Uh, what happened to your glasses? <laughs> I've got contact lenses now. <laughs> yeah, since beginning of September, I'm uh, wearing contact lenses. Um, yeah, because my I, I would have needed more. Yeah, these were my glasses. Okay. And uh, the, yeah, they were always a little bit dirty, so it was not quite uh, clear. And uh, because uh, when working uh, with a microscope, um, yeah, I can work with a microscope using glasses, of course. 
but I find it more convenient uh, without glasses. And yes, because I do make YouTube videos, uh, there are now less reflections from from the from the lamp in in my glasses. Okay. By the way, I did in my other YouTube channel. I did uh, put my my contact lenses, the disposable ones, also under the microscope. Yeah. Okay. Um, then, okay. Uh, did you see China 3D adapter for microscope? 3D adapter? No, I don't know what this is. A 3D adapter is. I have to I have to check out on that. Yeah, yeah. So you need um, yes, uh, because what I want to do here, you need a lot of space. Uh, it depends really a lot what you want to do, but I need a lot of space uh, to to put things here. Yeah? These microscopes, whether stereo or compound, are optimized for visible light. Um, ultraviolet light might be hazard or infrared microscopy also possible with these microscopes. Yes, well, as a matter of fact, if you use ultraviolet light, then it's called, it's called fluorescent microscopy. And uh, this is um, fluorescent microscopy is, uh, um, is indeed something that is used um, a lot, um, also in research. And uh, what you have is, is you have uh, light uh, coming um, from the top through the objective, through the objective, okay? Um, and then the fluorescent light is again picked up by the same objective. So there's a separate light path inside the objective that allows you to direct light downwards, okay? Um, so, um, yeah, so this means uh, that uh, actually the UV light is shining away from you. Um, so if you are interested in a little bit going into ultraviolet uh, light uh, or fluorescent microscopy, um, you can try to experiment with UV LED LEDs, which are not, uh, yeah, which go into the near ultraviolet. So it's not quite as, as problematic, I would say, for the eyes. Yeah. Um, put in AliExpress 3D microscopes. These are some small pieces mount under the lens. They rotate 360 degrees. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, thank you for that advice. I might, I'm going to check this out. When is in your next live? I want to ask an unrelated question about compound microscopes. Able, also the pattern of the chat. Oh, okay, yeah, you can ask uh, questions in MBR yeah, anytime, but sometimes uh, it's a good idea um, if uh, I collect the questions because I do want to make a live stream, of course, also where um, I simply answer some questions. And of course, uh, what time is it now? I always check the time. Yeah, 42 minutes. Look. Um, yeah. Okay. I did not kill this ladybug here. Okay. Just uh, some people are kind of worried about this. Yeah. Where is it? Here it is. Okay. Uh, that's of course, uh, you know, it was a dead la ladybug I found uh, on my window. I think it must be one of those invasive species because it's mostly black. And then a little bit more interesting. Where's this other one? I have to move it into the center. Okay. Where is this one? See, trying to finding it is always a challenge. Here it is. Okay, this is a fruit fly. Okay. And l look at this. I mean, this is one of the things that I, when I do stuff like this with my students, what they're so fascinated. I mean, you just look at the insects and then you actually, under the stereo microscope, yeah. Honestly, if you look through the eyepieces, it looks 10 times better. In more contrast, this, and you get a stereoscopic view as well. Okay. It looks so much better. Um, so what I'm, what you see here is, it's just able to give you a little taste. Yeah. yeah see, it's it's kind of difficult to 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 center it. Yeah. Then you, of course, you have to focus this again. Yeah. So you see that uh, it goes a uh, um, yeah a little bit also if you're interested in macro photography. Yeah. Then then of course this is, goes into the same direction a little bit here. Now you can see the omatidia, which are the individual, the, sing, the, uh, the, the compound eyes of, of an insect are made of several elements. Yeah, and they're called, yeah, look. Yeah. Oh, no, that's the wrong, that, that was the wrong one. I want to I grab the arrow, here it is, okay. That's, uh, you see all those little dots here, these are the, basically the individual elements to, uh, that collect light. How do you catch insects? Okay, well, um, I, I, I'll be honest with you, this uh, ladybug here was uh, already dead. Um, you catch insects um, uh, with a net, that's one thing, and I caught those insects by putting a little glass container, okay, uh, with a little bit of solvent like alcohol or acetone on a piece of uh, tissue paper over the insect, okay. Um, yeah. 
when you know, usually what you, what you use is, is um, um, how is this called? Is there's a special solvent that you use that's actually used? It's a standard solvent used to, to kill insect. Um, uh, ethyl acetate, it's called. Ethyl acetate is uh, is a solvent. It smells a little bit like vinegar, um, and that is actually kills uh, insects very quickly and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and uh, humanely. I, I want to say it's used by people who are studying insects. You have to unfortunately use dead insects uh, because otherwise they're gonna fly away. Yeah, and uh, I also have to find the other one. This is the ladybug, and this one over here. Is seems to be some kind of a mosquito. Yeah. Yeah. So quite uh, quite impressive. Yeah. To see all of the structural details. Yeah. Uh, and uh, don't let them move. Uh, yeah. If you do not want to kill insects, but if you still want to stop them moving so that you're able to observe them at least for a few minutes before they start to fly away, what you do is very simply you put them into, you catch them in a jar like this. Okay. Yeah. A fly. It's difficult yeah, to, to catch, obviously, but uh, um, if you're very careful, you might be able to be lucky. Um, you put a lid on top of the insect and you put it into the freezer for a few minutes and this will paralyze the insect. And then when it uh, goes back to room temperature, it's going to start moving again. Uh, at the university, we've been doing that with bees. Okay, because we were actually uh, observing bees and uh, because bees sting. Um, so we actually had to um, uh, prevent them from moving by, by, by putting them into the fri fri refrigerator. Okay, do stereo microscopes not have a movable stage? Um, not necessarily because, um, uh, because it's not necessary. The re uh, I think with movable stage, you mean the, the mechanical stage where you're kind of turning, where you're turning the, the, the knob so that you can move the slide. Generally, this type of precision is often not needed. Um, it's enough if I just basically yeah, move the, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the thing yeah, with my hands. Because um, it, the magnification is not so big that I need this type of precision. Yeah. Um, can you tell something about preparing insects? Yeah, I can. Uh, I mean, it depends really what what you need is you need so-called entomological needles. Where 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 are they? Just a second. Do, these are needles. I ordered them from from a, a special shop. And those needles are extremely fine. These are not, we're not talking about normal needles here, okay? So you know what, I'm, go I'm going to do this again here. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know what, I'm just going to show you the needles under the microscope, <laughs> why not? Yeah, these are uh, needles that are used, that are made specifically for, uh, for insect preparation. And they are really sharp. Okay, I mean, yeah. They're really, really sharp, and uh, they are sharp enough that they're able to that you're able to pin the insects, um, and then you're able to put them into an insect box. Okay. I mean, look, look at this. I mean, this is this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. So what I use sometimes do is, is I sometimes use those needles also to manipulate uh, some objects and push them around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, these are yeah I, I ordered them some some years ago yeah, from from a specialist shop okay um, can you see chemical reactions on the microscope like fire um, not hmm, you can of course hmm, you can see chemical reactions but not the actual reactions on a molecular level because the molecules how they react uh, you cannot see but you can see the results of it i mean for example if you burn a match um, on a cold microscope slide you're going to see deposit um, of of crystals on it okay um so you the, that you can see but not the actual reactions that happens between the chemicals itself because that is way below that what you're able to uh, see under the microscope okay uh, if you flip the base plate to black how does the image change well, let's do that okay um Let's, um, and I think uh, we are going to, that's an interesting question, which I didn't try out myself. So uh, let's use transparent objects, okay? Because uh, yeah, for opaque objects, it, it wouldn't make a huge difference. 
Okay. So this is basically the, again, the cross section is transparent. Okay. On a white background. And now let's see how this looks like. If I flip the base plate, it's difficult for me to reach in. Okay. You see there, it's not completely black um, in the microscope because of the reflections. And not very good. Okay. In this case, why not? Because um, the object is transparent and um, it actually, for you to see, be able to see it properly, you need light coming from the bottom. Okay. And there is now not enough light being reflected from the bottom because it's black. Yeah? But if you have a white surface, okay, then the light is reflected from the light surface and is able to, to bounce or to go through the specimen. Okay. So I would say it depends a little bit on the, um, on the specimen that you want to look at. Okay. Is the SW150 good for beginners? Uh, the, the Swift 150 is, belongs into this category over here. Okay. So it's an introductory microscope. And, uh, what I generally recommend is, is yeah, sure. Um, it depends what you expect. Um, start with it and after a couple of months when you outgrow it you know much better which type of microscope you want to buy and how much more money you want to spend okay I generally recommend uh, start uh, uh, start simple the SW150 of Swift is not a toys microscope or it's not a toy microscope yeah so I just want to say that this is a, a yeah uh, a perfectly good introductory microscope yeah it's picture quality of SW150. I will tell you what the problem of the Swift 150 is. It's not a problem. It's, it, it's simply uh, one of the characteristics of those microscopes. It does not have a condenser. Okay. So the condenser is a, an optical system be not below here. It doesn't have that. And for this reason, the image quality cannot be uh, quite as good, but it's very sufficiently good. Okay. Okay. Amscope has a mechanical stage for stereoscope. Oh, didn't know that. Limited to what type of basic? Yeah, that's an interesting one. A mechanical stage for a stereoscope. It's interesting. How has your 3D printed slide holder held up to the washing machine? <laughs> Just got another roll of plastic and probably gonna build another. Okay, I made some time ago, I made a slide holder, um, which is a 3D printed and I put it into the dishwasher and then it deformed and it melted because <laughs> the dishwasher was too hot. Uh -huh. So what time is it? Yeah, it's almost 52 minutes. Look, I found this, this one, this guy over here as well. Okay. Uh, it's not, not a fresh uh, specimen here. Um, it's a fly. Okay. And uh, yeah. it, of course, the further you zoom in, yeah, the lower the depth of field. And you can see all of the dust that the, this insect collected. I don't like touching those guys with my hands, so I always use tweezers. But at the same time, I didn't really feel like like uh, like killing it. So I was looking around in my apartment for some dead insects. And uh, when you find a dead insect that has been uh, lying around for some time, it has already collected dust. Because normally when the insect is alive, it will clean itself. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you okay? Uh, yeah, sorry for asking so much. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> students, uh, my students in my classroom, they also ask a lot of questions. Okay. I loved microscopes since nine years old. You ever try ABS? No, I did not try ABS plastic uh, for 3D printing. That's also something because ABS requires a higher temperature. So it might also uh, be able to withstand uh, higher temperatures better. Yeah. Again, off topic, but do you have tips on how to make scientific drawings of what I see? Um, I have read, that's an interesting point, uh, scientific drawings. This is a huge topic. Um, when you get yourself identification books, um, that uh, contain insects, um, drawn from a stereo microscope, microorganisms and so on, you're going to see that in many cases, most cases, um, there are, or many cases, they're not photographs included, but drawings. And the reason is, is because the drawings are much often much simpler and they're, you're able to place a focus on the things that's important for the identification purpose. Um, there is 
I'm not so particularly practiced in drawing. I have done this as well and tried it as well. But there is one recommendation that I've read that um, I also teach my students when I require them to draw something that they see under the microscope. And that is, 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 and I've seen, as a matter of fact, my son, my 13-year-old son, he has made a, also a very nice drawing, <laughs> but uh, he has uh, made the same quote-unquote mistake. And that is what you should try to avoid is, let me get a pencil or a pen. Um, yeah, when you draw, when people draw something, okay, I need, I need, I'm going to use again this. No, you know what? Sorry, I'm going to uh, change over. Okay, here, here we go. That's my other, yeah. Let's go here. Uh, many people, when they start to draw something under the microscope, uh, what they will do is, is they will go like this, okay? I don't know, they want to draw now, I don't know, the, the head of, of, of whatever, of, of the insect, okay? And this is how usually, you, of course, you want to draw with a pencil. You never draw with a pen. I just don't have a pencil around here. But this is actually something that you should not do. Okay, um, so the recommendation is, is, is always to try, if possible, to draw in continuous lines. Okay, um, apparently this is, apparently this is, um, yeah, it's better. Yeah, maybe uh, from an abstraction standpoint, and I guess the reason is, is because if you draw always in, in, in little lines like this, then you're very much focused um, on a small particular area. But if you draw uh, using longer strokes, longer lines, then you're, you kind of want to get, you're forced to think of the proportions, and the proportions are the important ones. Things, yeah? And if you start drawing small little lines here you know, all the time, then you're only focused on a small area. Yeah? I, I think that is the reason. Again, I'm not, a, I'm not an, a, an expert in drawing, but the, 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 the big recommendation that I've read in a book somewhere about making scientific drawings is, is, is try to practice drawing in continuous lines. Okay, um, sorry, that's all I can <laughs> can share with you now, <laughs> and uh, uh, and that's but that's also the advice that I'm giving uh, my students when uh, when they have to draw something. Okay, let me put something again here. Um, can stereo microscopes have a magnification of a compound? Um, the thing is the following: um, my stereo microscope goes up to a magnification of forty-five. Okay, and a compound microscope starts at a magnification of 40. So basically the compound microscopes, they start off there where the stereo microscope ends. However, however, there is something called a Barlow lens that you can attach to some compound microscopes. And a Barlow lens, this year it says here it's two times. Okay. I have to show you, you have to again look at the I'm going to make this bigger again, okay? I have to focus maybe also a little bit, yeah. And it works like this that, um, yeah, over here, I can take this here off, okay? Okay, so I this here is an adapter so that uh, I'm able to um, connect the lamp. But instead of the adapter, okay, Instead of the adapter, I'm going to now uh, insert the two times Barlow lens. And now my microscope is able to go up to a magnification of 90 times. Okay. However, I rarely use this because this magnification already requires so much light and is already so blurry that you don't gain a lot. Okay. But just for the sake of trying it out. Why not try it out? Okay, so I'm going to make this smaller again. How do I make this smaller? Okay, let's make it smaller again. And now I have to use a very flat object. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to use my, my drawing. Okay, and now I have to go all the way down and hope that I'm able to find somewhere, maybe even have to go down, down, down in the back because I can, yeah, and I don't even know. I go up with, yeah, and now I have to kind of, I'm not even sure if I'm able to focus that close. Ah, I have to raise, I have to raise the paper. 
Look, I have to raise the paper all the way up to here that I'm even able yeah, to get the lowest magnification here. It's that close. And then I can zoom in further. I have to refocus again. Um, you know what, I, I think I should, I, I think I might want to use a, I'm going to put it over here on my little jar. Okay. And uh, simply to illustrate to you that high magnifications are not always very, very meaningful. Okay, let's, let's try this here, okay? So this is now basically the lowest magnification with the Barlow lens. And now let's try to go up all, ah, see, I bumped it and I have already missed it here, okay? So, and let's go up yet further. So and this, this should be now 90 times, okay? The sound is quite distorted, sorry. I don't know, distorted means it's probably too loud. Can this be the case? Okay, uh, if it's too distorted, I'm going to go down a little bit with the volume. I hope that this is better now, okay? Maybe, maybe the microphone was a little bit too close to my mouth, okay? But what I wanted to make clear here is, is now this is the, 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 the highest magnification that I can get with the Barlow lens. And this is now also um, 90 times. So this basically means around 100 times is, is also um, one of the lower magnifications of a compound microscope. Huh? Um, I, I, I question the usefulness a little bit, okay? because the depth of field is so low and the point of a stereo microscope actually is, is that you get a stereoscopic view um, and if uh, most of it is blurry then yeah you don't yeah, you have to use a very flat uh, specimen here okay um, so let me go through the questions again because there are quite a lot of them here um, uh, uh, big fat rings on the destroying Angle drawings in real life, the rings are not so huge. Could imagine the black backside could be not good with transparent objects and UV light for fluorescent microscopy. Yeah, maybe. I have you challenge. Uh, uh, try showing electronics text and SMD CPU or another element. Ah, that's an interesting one. <laughs> yeah, basically uh, some surface mounted devices yeah, for electronics. Yeah. Some of the digital stereoscopes are really cheap, thinking about picking one up for petri dishes and minerals. Let me see if I've got one here. Uh, nope, I think I have it somewhere. Here it is. Okay, if you, um, uh, yeah, maybe uh, you, um, you've already seen those type of uh, USB microscopes. It says it goes all the way up to 1000. Forget about it, it's meaningless. Okay, it's not correct if it says a thousand times. Um, and those microscopes actually um, are quite cheap. I, I bought this from China, AliExpress, for seven euros, which was uh, seven or eight US dollars. So really cheap. It's not the greatest one, but it's fun to use. And considering the fact that it's so cheap, yeah, it has included LEDs. And when you basically uh, yeah, put it on top, you get pretty much the same image like in a stereo microscope. You do not get the three-dimensional view, obviously the stereoscopic view, but the image looks very similar. Okay, there is an in, uh, included LED. Again, this particular model is not the, <laughs> the most <laughs> the sophisticated one, but it gets the job done and considering it was cheap, it was fine. Okay, so this is also something that I can recommend if you just wanna play around a little bit, but not spend too much money, okay? Uh, where can where, where can I send you the questions? You can actually post questions into uh, beneath the video. When um, after some time the video is going to be, after the live stream is gonna be all online. Um, and uh, then you, there's also a comments section available. So not in the chat where you're typing in right now, but in the comment sections, you can uh, type in questions and I, I read them. I might not respond uh, uh, to um, all of the questions, but yeah. Um, also your sound is not better. I, I went down a little bit with the sound because it was uh, maybe a little bit too loud and then you have distortions here. Yeah, yeah they tried a 2,500 times selling point, yeah. Yeah, I have said this many times before, high power does not mean better images. Yeah, yep, yep. 
Where did you get it? Uh, which one, what are you referring to? Do you mean this microscope here? Well, those type of, if, yeah, if you're referring to those type of microscopes where I bought them, you can buy them over Amazon. The prices are huge in difference. This one over here, I think I bought over AliExpress from China, uh, but it does take some time to arrive. Um, I made also a, a review video of this yeah, and it came in, I don't know, wrapped in a horrible condition. <laughs> but the good thing about this microscope is, or rather a camera is, is that it does not require any drivers. You just plug it in and uh, then it has so-called UVC. This means uh, that the uh, Windows is already able to, to, to use it directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hand microscope with five megapixels cameras created. Uh, yeah. The deals you get uh, though is worth uh, the wait. Yep, AliExpress is is. Uh, um, I've got uh, basically it's really cheap, but some of the products were like one of the camera adapters was a disaster. I made a video on this as well, but it was pretty cheap, you know. Um, so it might actually be worth the risk. Yeah. Um, so what I said, what I have done is, is if you, for example, need spare parts, like for example, spare eyepieces um, or spare objectives, you're going to discover very quickly that many of the microscopes that, that are sold uh, over Amazon, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and those, uh, those objectives um, you find in many different microscopes. And uh, you find them, you can buy them separately also over AliExpress because they're made in China and they're simply put on the microscopes um, and then they're sold as a complete package. So if you want to, if you need replacement objectives, uh, you might directly shop them from China. Yeah. Um, can you watch snowflakes uh, under the microscope? Yes, this is possible. I have done this already before. Not the snowflakes themselves, but what you do, and that's by the by the way, that's a nice uh, stereo microscopy project as well. What you do is, is you take some nail polish, the one that you put in your know, clear nail polish, and you put it on a slide, and the nail polish, um, however, must be uh, frozen. You put it into the freezer first, and you apply a layer of nail polish on the slide, and while it is still wet, you catch snowflakes, and then you allow the nail polish to become solid. And what you have is you have the impression of a snowflake on um, in the nail polish and then you put the impression under the microscope. You'll get interesting results. Yes, I also already made videos uh, on that. You have to search for them in my other channel. Okay, um, so there are uh, prices are starting to rise again. Yes, stereo or compound for viewing super small fruit flies almost cannot see them with a naked eye. Generally, if you are really interested in fruit flies or any insects, you probably want to start out with a stereo microscope because you get a sense of depth, okay? Um, so uh, folks who are studying insects, they um, yeah, uh, go stereo microscopes first. Yeah? Um, also because uh, fruit flies or any insect which is pigmented, uh, might still be too dark to be seen with a compound microscope. You need to clear it and you need to, to bleach it. Yeah? Can you watch snowflakes? Yes, I've talked about this. What if we add a mul uh, multi-able filter to a stereo with a parlor? Multi-able filter to the stereo with parlor. I don't know what you mean with a uh, multi-able filter, okay? I mean, you can, of course, put filters, uh, color filters um, over it. Yeah, it should be not a problem. I built do it yourself cameras for microscopes from Sony picture is great, better than, uh -huh. yep. Yeah, that's uh, it, indeed something that sometimes people have uh, been doing. I've also started off myself. Um, when I did uh, 20 years ago, I adapted a, a regular webcam for 640 times 480 pixels to a microscope because I simply didn't have anything else. Yeah, yeah, yep. The Pi cams, yes, I've also seen the, the Raspberry Pi cameras. Yeah, how do you bleach insects, please? Well, um, you bleach uh, you bleach them um, uh, by uh, adding, um, uh, I think, potassium hydroxide, uh, a KOH solution, and you have to. Uh, there are recipes online. Um, potassium hydroxide, I think, works, and you can also use a mounting medium called Uporol, which I have used also myself. And this mounting medium also has a very clearing action and it will actually make the, the exoskeleton of the insect more transparent. Yeah. 
what if we added more than one filter to the stereo microscope? Well, um, what you can do, I mean, I don't know why you would want to do that, but uh, what you theoretically can do, of course, is you can add color filters, yeah? Um, and then you're able to see everything with uh, through the, the colored filter, yeah? Um, I use my compound for fruit flies, yep. Um, yeah, so fruit flies, if they're pretty small, then um, there is no reason why you should not be able to make a whole mount as well. Yeah, um, I think uh, yeah. um, what sometimes might be necessary is, is that if the fruit fly is a little bit too, too thick, then you simply have to separate and cut it apart a little bit, separate the, the legs and, and I don't know, yeah? uh, the wings and so on. Yeah? So, the, um, wow, one hour, 10 minutes. So, fruit flies are, as a matter of fact, I think this was, uh, where is this other one? I think this might have been a, not, not, not such a small one, but this might have been a fruit fly. Uh, I, see, and I now have the, 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 the two times Barlow on here, so I'm, I'm, I'm not able to, to uh, uh, it's now with the Barlow lens. Uh, here, that's the fly. That's not the lowest magnification. I cannot even get that close. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a, uh, it's actually in focus uh, through the eyepieces, but not in focus on yeah in yeah in the camera. Yep. Um, yeah. How to make money to buy microscopes under 18? Can I ask companies for rent or testing? Uh, is this basically that the, are you asking that uh, because uh, you, you want to rent or, uh, or test microscopes? I think what the companies these days do or what is possible is, is um, uh, I'm not recommending this, but uh, uh, over Amazon, what they have, they have a very good returns policy. And I've uh, known uh, from people who basically ordered a microscope, they tried it out and sent it back. Now, it's not, not, not something that I generally recommend doing. But on the other hand, um, yeah, this is, might be a, a, a possibility that you simply try it out and then send it back. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Tip, uh, sand grains and tea herbs are nice objects to watch with a microscope. Yes, sand grains um, are quite nice, yeah? They charge no less, yeah? Uh-huh. So I guess that basically these are... Uh-huh. Uh oh, now I get it. How to make money to buy my under 18? Oh, I get it. Okay, so you basically want to buy yourself a microscope. I see. <laughs> yeah. So what I, I would suggest is the following. You, you do, 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 do a little bit. If, if you want to buy yourself a microscope, um, then that's my general advice is, is don't spend too much at the beginning. Get started so soon. Don't, don't go for toy microscopes. Um, and then um, you, because the main important thing is, is that you gain experience and that you learn something. And then once you know, know a little bit more, then you can always make a better decision what to buy next. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think I'm just going to look around. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah, look at this uh, last, last thing. Yeah, picture. Again, uh, yeah, if you go very much, this is a, this is a, a, a printout from a printer. Yeah, you see the pixels. Yeah. I have to hold it up again because I've got the two times Barlow and that connected. So even here, flat objects are easiest to look at because they have uh, the depth of field. But again, here, um, I would not recommend the two times Barlow. I have another Barlow lens which reduces the magnification. Now you're gonna say, why in the world would anyone reduce the magnification? Because there is an interesting uh, side effect. And you can, all of a sudden you have a much larger distance. So um, if for whatever reason you need a large distance between the specimen and the lens, um, then Maybe you're doing soldering, okay? Um, because some people are actually doing uh, soldering uh, under the microscope, and you need a large distance because you do not want to have the soldering smoke cover maybe the lenses. And then you use a reduction Barlow, which not does not magnify but reduce the magnification, and then you can actually move the microscope pretty far away um, and uh, still get a clear image. The magnification is lower, still large enough, uh, but the the working distance, as it's called, is much uh, higher. So this is actually the reason why there are also reduction barlows, yeah, which reduce the magnification. Yeah. So, so 
So what I choose, National Geographic Stereo, okay, or SW150, okay. I use a Barlow lens 0.5 times in electronics. Yep, okay. So because, uh, yeah, I try, uh, the, the, the working distance is, is um, significantly larger. Yeah? So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to reconnect uh, the, uh, the LED again. Um, yeah, it's one hour and 15 minutes already. Um, I think I'm slowly going to call it quits for this week again. Hope uh, that you liked it again. I simply wanted to introduce stereo microscopes as well because uh, somehow they seem to be a little bit neglected. Um, the people who are interested in microscopy um, sometimes have both, uh, but uh, what I always recommend is especially parents, grandparents who want to do microscopy, especially if the children are smaller, um, uh, especially if children are smaller, I highly recommend uh, to, um, yeah, to use stereo microscopes because, um, yeah, you get an upright image. Okay, that's the ammonite, the fossil. You get an upright image. Um, and you can directly manipulate the object and you, um, it's a more natural extension of your vision. And especially for children, this is, uh, I think, more accessible. Disadvantage of stereo microscopes um, for hobby purposes is, <laughs> so you'll be surprised, I, I think they're a little bit too easy to use. Um, uh, you see the compound microscopes, those guys here, there is simply more to turn, okay? You have a coarse focus, a fine focus, you have different objectives, yeah? You, you have to make microscope slides and so on. So uh, it requires more, more, uh, there are more things to do with, with a compound microscope. Um, and that can be an advantage sometimes if, if this is what you, what you want to do, right? Um, but for small children, it, this might be actually a disadvantage, yeah? Because uh, you cannot simply collect a leaf um, and put it under a, a, a compound microscope. Okay, as I'm talking about leaves, I had somewhere a leaf over here also prepared. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah here, here's the leaf. Yeah. It's fall time, autumn. All you do is you put it on here, under here, and, and you can yeah, uh, start observing. Yeah, and uh, see little animals. And this um, it makes it so easy that essentially, I think it's very suitable for children. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to slowly quit. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this very interesting session. Thank you for the thank you. Thank you for the broadcast. Got late, uh, great. And to show also thinking of designing a printed ring for the SW380 on top body. Yes. Okay, we'll let you know. Yes, please, if you have any, um, any um, uh, success in, in experimentation, please uh, share this. Huh? Lights in microscope is uh, very important. I search something, manipulate the lights, temperature of microscope, but no right. Uh, is, yeah, um, concerning the, the microscope um, light, yeah, indeed, um, yeah, I don't know of any microscope light that allows you to adjust the color temperature. With halogen light bulbs, the color temperature changes with intensity, but nowadays with LEDs, you should actually have more control, yeah. Have you observed ostracods? Yes, in water samples, okay, and yeah, um, I wish you all the best, and uh, Oh, gee, there was a last slide I wanted to put uh, on here. This is a water sample, now dry. I just wanted to share this with you because there are some mites on here, some living mites. I just thought that I'm just going to share this with you. Yeah, before I say goodbye. Yeah, these are microscopic mites Yeah, in a, from a water sample. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Last, last questions here before I really have to go, okay. Uh, how should I clean the SW150 or let it last longer? You don't, don't clean it uh, unless it's necessary. Don't clean the optics unless it's necessary. Uh, just make sure that uh, you keep dust away, okay. Yeah, um, so yeah, th those water mites I found in this, in this jar in here. I had an old water sample and it's now full of mites living, living in the water. <laughs> okay <laughs> okay um wish you all the best uh, and uh, hopefully see you again next week i still have to think of a topic uh, of what i'm going to talk about next week don't know yet maybe it's going to be a general question and answer session uh, maybe not we'll see yeah bye bye happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time all the best <laughs>